So today we are out at the Ineos Grenadier. We are here to review this insane vehicle. This is probably the most anticipated 4x4 in the last 20 years. This was built by Sir Jim Radcliffe. This was like a 180 was in a pub called the Grenadier. That's the story. Called the Grenadier with his friends. He couldn't find the perfect 4x4 for him. He travels a lot. He's an adventurer. He's a philanthropist. He's seen the world. And he wanted something that was reliable, indestructible, something you could work on in the wild. And they sat and they wrote down and they drew these little drawings on a napkin in the Grenadier pub. 
and that's where they decided what to call it. They were like, what are we going to call this thing? They didn't know. The napkin still stands in the Grenadier pub and it's framed there now because this was the concept that was the idea behind it. And a few years later when the project actually kicked off and his friends, unbeknown to his friends, he decided to start doing it, he realized we're going to stick with the same name, which is the Grenadier. Now this vehicle is unmatched almost. It has got center, rear and front diff lock. There are very few vehicles on the market that can claim that. Now, if you look at this vehicle, it stands so high off of the ground. It's got such great departure angles and approach angles. Um, the vehicle is in such a way it's manufactured that when you are out with the vehicle and you're stuck in the middle of somewhere, if that ever happens, you are able to phone the headquarters and they should be able to guide you how to fix the vehicle if need be. It's not every day you can find it because it does not rely on a lot of electronics. It is not an overly engineered vehicle. It doesn't come with sat nav doesn't come with all the bells and whistles like electric seats and that. The vehicle is made to be a utilitarian vehicle that you can hose out. You can, you can basically, it's, it's, it's modular in such a way that you can add things onto it. You can take things off. The other model's got pop-up windows that actually come completely out. It's winch ready, so it's got controls for the winch. You just wire up the winch. So this is the kind of idea that they had behind this was a vehicle that you can take out there. The average guy can drive it. The vehicle is extremely capable because it's got a BMW. It's got two variants of the BMW engines in. The same ones you find in the X5s of today. Uh, you've got the diesel and the petrol variant. But the vehicle itself, if you stand next to it and you get into it, it's got such a prowess and such a powerful thing about it. Even when we were driving it up on the mountains, and you'll see later in the video, the way you can actually feel the diffs and everything just doing what it needs to do, and the vehicle just takes itself up. It's a very comfortable drive. Um, it's got aircon. The vehicle can tow 3,500 tons, so that's at least one of the things that you know you can go camp with this vehicle. You know you can go out of this vehicle. The vehicle comes with no leather seats. It comes with waterproof seats, splashproof seats. It comes with all the dials you can think of. It's got scootal hooter, which uh, you don't have to hoot loud for a cyclist. You can actually just hit the other hooter, and then it's like a little peep just to get the cyclist out the way. But my whole thing behind this is it's been so many years and since a new car manufacturer on the 4x4 scene has come out. It's always just super car manufacturers coming out and hyper car manufacturers that you hear of and Korean car manufacturers. You never hear of a new brand in the 4x4 scene coming to dominate only the 4x4 scene. Not worrying about sedans and passenger vehicles and micro cars, just purely 4x4 vehicles. And this is what the Enius is. It's purely a 4x4 vehicle. Um, it's a beautiful vehicle, I must add, also. Uh, so now it's nice to add that into the market. The vehicle's going to be landing in South Africa. You're looking at about October side. Um, for people to actually have their, their own versions of it. The test vehicles will be here in March. We're just privileged to be here today to actually get to drive in it. And after the years of following this vehicle's manufacturing process, to actually be there and see the vehicle in the flesh. So if you look at a few things on the vehicle, the vehicle still got PDC. It has got your, your, your Bizen and lights. It's got your spotlights. It's got your infamous pop open that you want on vehicles. Um, also the way the vehicle's got its bash plates in the front. It's got the bash plates at the back. It's got your recovery points and it's rated recovery points. And there's a few things in the cockpit also that are just unique to the vehicle. But for me is the height. I mean, you look at the height here, the height, if I take the height where the vehicle is, it's there. That's the height of the vehicle. It's extremely high. If you stand next to me, this is standard height. So this hasn't been pumped up or lifted up or anything. This is the standard height of the vehicle. It is just an amazing build quality on the vehicle. And the next thing, and the one big thing is, it's very rare. I think if not ever that you never hear of it, that car manufacturers actually allow people to drive in their prototypes. Normally a prototype is a vehicle that's wrapped in camouflage and it's lurking around that no one gets to actually see the vehicle or touch the vehicle. They stand so much behind the brand that they're willing to let the average person get in a prototype that's still an unfinished vehicle so that you can kind of get a feel for it. So that does say a lot about how much confidence they have inside the vehicle and in the vehicle that they're willing to let a prototype go because anything can go wrong with a prototype but they've got that faith to let you test drive this vehicle so watch your video and have a look at it it's very brief it was very quick but it's still an amazing experience to be in this vehicle so tell me about what i heard online with this was that you were able to then 
this whole console here on the roof you're also able to just bring things from here down but you guys have already pre-wired it yes so here we have auxiliary switches so you kind of have that auxiliary switches and this auxiliary switches is a is is already pre-wired pre-connected to the vehicle so if you want to add a winch uh light bars uh additional fridges uh anything else regarding accessories we have a pre-wired um, harness already within the vehicle. Does it go the same? Does it the same apply for the front one? The, the, this down here is just cosmetic, not cosmetics, but for your, your your fan, your direction of your fan, your heated seats, your demisters, hazard switch, aircon, so recirculating, stop start. So everything here is related to the convenience or comfort of the vehicle. Everything above us is. 4x4. Four four. Okay. So we've separated that. Otherwise the dashboard becomes cluttered. Cluttered. Yeah. So here will be a compass. So there will be a compass that is optional, um, either compass or badge in the completed vehicle, depending on the customer's. Okay. We have a touch screen which can calculate and monitor wheel slippage for traction. So in case one of the wheels lose traction in a 4x4 situation, you can then activate the front diff lock with the center diff lock and get you out of this sticky situation or go up an extreme uh, decline or incline. Will the vehicle be coming with a GPS? The vehicle will not come with GPS. It will have um, tracker coordinations, yes, but it does have Apple iPlay um, and Bluetooth connectivity to your cell phone. Yeah. yeah, so that is a kind of, a, it's a standard, but I think once we go to left and right and drive, we might just change that to the other side. So. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work yet, so we'll wait and see. Did the uh, jump on the super bike and standing inside here. So yeah, you can hear how quiet it is, eh? It is much quiet. Now you're pushing small little a few minutes few parts but it's not uh, heavy and intense though. so the next uh, the next one is the uh, oscillation it's right here in front of us okay, no, wait, 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 I'm yeah. gonna come around the corner first what? yeah like uh, like you know like normally when you when you fall by four then you must it's slow and steady are we going to now tilt on this embankment yeah we're gonna start getting straightening out now soon Keep it driving in front of you. Okay, I'm not here, I'm not here, I'm not here, I'm coming down. Is he coming up? Yeah, <laughs> 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 